So good afternoon, one and all. I'm your host and moderator, Preeta Harikrishnan, Deputy Manager Admissions, Amrita Health Sciences, Kochi Campus. We are here today uh, for a talk on optometry. And for that, we have our senior optometrist, Madam Deepa from Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences. So I am sure you will all benefit a lot from this talk. And if you have any queries, you can uh, send your queries to the doubt the chat box and we shall clear it by the end of the session so let me tell you what who madam is madam has completed her diploma in ophthalmic assistance course from medical college Trishur. she has done her bsc optometry from amrita institute of medical sciences Cochin, and then her msc optometry from rehan college of optometry and presently she is doing her doctorate degree Madam has a vast experience of 19 years as a clinical optometrist and also is the faculty for BSc optometry course at Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences. She has attended the national seminar on community-based rehabilitation for the visually impaired and attended low vision assessment program at LB Prasad Eye Hospital Institute at Hyderabad. She was also the guest speaker at Cochin Ophthalmic Club at Ernakulam and Trishur. I welcome you, Madam, to address our viewers today. Thank you, Preeta, ma'am, for your warm introduction. So we can go to the presentation. Yes. So one second, I will share my screen. So in today's webinar, I would like to talk about uh, some insights about the uh, mainly what is optometry, then who is an optometrist, then what are the job descriptions of an optometrist, then what is BSc optom how uh, BSc optometrist uh, optometry course in Amrita is going on, what is the course content. Uh, what are the teaching methodologies and what are what are topics we cover in each academic year about the examinations and during the internship period in which all department you will be having postings and what all you will learn in your internship period then uh, what are the um, job uh, what are the uh, for the optometry, what are the, uh, sorry, because of the, some technical issue happened. Uh, so, the screen, sorry. The screen yeah. is, yeah. Okay. You can maximize What it. are the job op opportunities? So uh, to, uh, to the first slide, I'll go to the first slide. First, what is optometry? Optometry is a specialized healthcare profession that involves examining the eyes and related structures for any defects or abnormalities. And who is an optometrist? Optometrists are the primary healthcare professionals who provide comprehensive eye and vision care. So, and what are the job descriptions of the optometrists? First, uh, just routine eye examinations like vision testing, eye pressure testing, like that. Then uh, do all the diagnostic and therapeutic procedures in ophthalmology. Then prescribe glasses, contact lenses, and other low vision aids. Uh, then uh, give health education at community level about the importance of eye care, occupational and industrial eye safety. Then... Uh, advice eye exercise for to relieve the eye strain etc then about bsc optometry course at aims we started this bsc optometry in 2009 so we started in 2009 with four students and in 2018 there are 10 students 
in, in uh, from 2019, we have 15 students per batch. So in 2016, we started the fellowship program in advanced optometry. And in 2017, we got approval to register under paramedical council so that our students can write the government optometry exam. Then 94% of the students who passed BSc optometry have obtained placements. About our department faculties, this is Dr. Gobal Espillai. Sir is the head of the department. Then this is Dr. Nadasha. She is the chief program coordinator for BSc optometry course. And this is Dr. Anil Radhakrishnan, sir. Sir is corneal specialist. Dr. Sujitra, uh, Madam is Oculoplasty Surgeon, and Dr. Manoj Pradhapan, Glaucoma Specialist, and Dr. Rehna, Ma'am Retina Specialist. About the course structure, BSc Optometry is a full-time undergraduate program. You There will be a total of four years. In that, three years course and one year internship. And eligibility criteria, you know, pass in plus two with 50% marks in physics, chemistry, biology. Then what all topics we cover in each academic year? In the first year, you will learn the basic things about the eye, basic anatomy of each structures like conjunctiva, cornea, lens, etc. Then how it works that we, you will learn in this physiology and biochemistry and basic optics and refraction. And orthoptics. Orthoptics means uh, about the eye muscles, binocularity, then uh, any uh, lazy, everything will learn under this topic. In the second year, you will learn refraction. Refraction means we are how we are finding out the power, glass power of a patient. It is a slightly complicated procedure that you will learn detail in the second year. Then about the eye diseases of each structures like conjunctiva, conjunctivitis, cornea, keratitis, lens, cataract, etc. And some investigations in ophthalmology uh, like uh, eye pressure checking, then visual field charting, double vision testing, etc. And under ocular pharmacology, you will learn about ophthalmic drugs that we use to treat some uh, disease, um, treat various diseases. And uh, other drugs we use to dilate the eye to see inside the eye. And ophthalmic instruments, etc. you will learn in this second year. Madam, may I just interfere? Can you maximize the screen? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Now? Yes. Now, there was a problem for changing to the next slide. That's why putting that. Oh, that is why you put it the yeah. other way, is it? One second, madam. Mm. Now, in the third year, we will learn more advanced optics and orthoptics. Then advanced refraction. Uh, you will start do one procedure called retinoscopy in which we will find out the uh, shadow movement. Accordingly, we can find out the glass power of the patient. And next investigations in advanced investigations in ophthalmology like the FFA fundus fluorescein angiogram in which we are testing the retinal circulation. Then um, scans of the retina like uh, optical coherence of uh, tomography. Then contact lenses. Contact lenses, what are the types of contact lenses? How you will fit contact lenses? And what are the indications and contraindications of lenses? And what are, how can you, how will you maintain and care contact lenses, etc.? We will cover in this contact lens topic. And next is the low vision. Low vision means 
uh, if uh, after a medical and surgical correction, in some cases, we can't improve their vision. So for that patients, we can give some uh, corrections like magnifier glasses or some other uh, telescopic glasses, etc. The About that, you will learn detail in this law vision paper. Next comes ophthalmology OT. What all instruments are there in ophthalmology for each cases like cataract surgery, screen surgery, etc. And how uh, they are doing the aseptic techniques for the sterilization of the theater, etc. In the optical section, you will learn about the spectacle, that is glass lenses. What are the types of lenses we use in the glasses and what are the spe uh, frame materials uh, in detail you will learn in this spectacle what are the parts of the frame how will you dispense uh, glasses for a patient and how will you handle uh, the patient complaints etc next paper pathology and microbiology that is the basic pathology and microbiology of uh, ocular diseases like retinoblastoma it is a uh, tumor now coming to the newer advances, uh, you will learn uh, the newer advancements like uh, femtosecond LASIK surgery, then uh, um, uh, multifocal contact lenses, uh, multifocal intraocular lenses that we put after the cataract surgery. And in the eye bank, you will learn about how uh, when we take cornea, uh, the donor cornea, how to preserve the donor cornea, what all investigation we need to or do before transplantation, etc. You will learn in this paper. So uh, about the theory classes, you will have detailed lectures by the faculties. Then assignments will be there. Seminar presentations will be there. Case discussions. Uh, then journal clubs, clinical conferences. In the seminar presentations, each topic will be uh, given for each student and they have to present that topic. You will be getting marks accordingly and that marks will consider for the internal assessment. Uh, it is the same for case discussions also. And regarding the practical classes, there will be demonstrations and hands-on training sessions uh, about the various procedures and instruments in the OPD uh, and clinical posting in various subspecialties uh, like cornea clinic, glaucoma clinic, screen clinic, LASIK clinic, etc. Then in operation theater, you will get postings and in the opticals also. In the first year, you will learn uh, practical skill based, uh, the basic skills you will learn. Uh, for example, how to check the vision or how to deal a patient, how to take the history of the patient and how to uh, find out the glass power of the patient, etc. Coming to the next second year, uh, more advanced practical skill you will attain, like uh, this double vision testing, then uh, proptosis, that is bulging of the, how much bulging is there, that how to measure, etc. that you will learn in the second year. And in the third year, I told you before, uh, most advanced investigations like uh, fluorescent angiogram, uh, then contact lens fitting, uh, artificial eye fitting, etc. You will learn in the final year. Then coming to the examinations, about the examinations, there will be two sessional examinations and one pre-university examination or more, uh, that is the model examination just before the university examination. And there will be university examination at the end of each academic year. In the first year, second year and third year, you will be having two sessional, one pre-university and a university examination. The university examination in the final year, there will be theory and practical examinations. And to write the examination, 75% of attendance is mandatory. And the pass criteria, 50% 50 50 in each subjects. And in the internship period, you will have posting in refraction. Refraction mainly we do the vision testing. Uh, we are checking the glass power of the patient and we are finding out the new glass power of the patient. 
then um, the basic procedures for the diagnosis of the ocular diseases. Then a pediatric ophthalmology clinic, uh, squint examination, uh, then uh, their glass power examination, etc. Cornea clinic, retina clinic, glaucoma clinic, uh, screen clinic, uh, low vision clinic, LASI clinic, and in contact lens clinic, you will have post. Then comes the optometry procedures. So before that, I will just try that I can show one video. Sorry, at the end I will show you, if possible. So, regarding the optometry procedures, first comes refraction, that is vision testing. Then, this is auto-refractometry. You have seen this instrument in the optical shops also. This is computer eye testing to madam, check the glass power. Madam, the screen is not visible. Is that okay, ma'am? Yes, now we can see it, but it's not maximized. Maybe you have issues when you do it that yeah. way. Okay. So, I told you the first optometry procedure, the first procedure is vision testing or refraction. Uh, basically, uh, unaided visual acuity without any correction and with correction, we have to find out the, how much vision a patient has and we have to find out the glass bar also. That is called refraction that we will do in the refraction posting. Now, next is auto-refractometry or the computer eye testing. You have seen this instrument in the optical source. So, automatically we will get a printout of the power of your glass. And this is orthoptic examination in which we are doing the binocular eye testing, binocularity and uh, any lazy eye is there. And any screen is there. Screen in Malayalam, we call it as Konganna. Then this is the visual field examination. Visual field, the area, when we focus at an object, we can see the surrounding source. That is called the visual field. So that we can check with this instrument. Uh, the purpose of this test is to find out any visual field defects are there. It is related with some diseases like glaucoma or some neurological problem, tumor, etc. So for that, we are doing this visual field examination. And this is the strict lamp examination. This is the microscopic exam. Uh, we can do the microscopic examination of every structures like lid, uh, cornea, conjunctiva, lens, etc. Then this is contact lens fitting. This is a scan biometry in which when we do the cataract surgery, what we are doing is we are just removing the cataractus lens and we are inserting a new intraocular lens. So before that, we have to find out the correct power of the intraocular lens that we are inserting inside after the cataract surgery. Cataract removal. So, to find out the intraocular power, we are doing this procedure, a scan biometry. And this is tonometry, in which we will check the eye pressure checker. And this is ophthalmoscopy, in which we are checking inside the eye, retinal examination. The innermost layer of the eye is called retina. We call it as nyarambulnavari. And this is fundus photography, in which this is a fluorescent angiogram. We can do fluorescent angiogram with this uh, fundus camera. 
to check any uh, block or any leakage in the retinal circulation. Uh, with diabetic retinopathy and all, there will be bleeding. So for that patients, we are doing this procedure. And this is specular microscopy. Specular microscopy, mainly we do to uh, check the health of the cornea before transplantation and before some surgeries like cataract or refractive surgery, we will do this procedure. And this is corneal topography. In this, uh, we are uh, investigating the corneal surface before the last surgery. And this is electroretinogram or ERG. This uh, investigation we do to find out any retinal pathology. A scan biometry, I told you before. And this is proptosis measurement. You have seen some uh, patients having their eyes bulged, uh, mainly uh, thyroid patients, hyperthyroidism. This bulging, uh, we use this uh, instrument called exophthalmometer to measure this proptosis. And these are uh, low visual aids. And other procedures also are there like keratometry. Keratometry is uh, used to uh, find out the corneal curvature and diplopia or double vision charting. Some patients may complain double vision. So for that patients, uh, we will do this test and we'll find out which muscle is affected. And then this is aberrometry. Aberrometry is a uh, pre lasic procedure. Then dispensing artificial eyes uh, for uh, cosmetic purposes. And our students have community of thalmology posting also. Uh, they will go for camps and all. For, uh, like uh, cataract screening, diabetic screening, glaucoma screening, school screening, etc. And in the co-curricular activities, actually in the curriculum, there is one period for student activity. So in that period, we will screen and promote the students. And they have participated and won uh, in their college competition. About the higher studies regarding optometry, after the BSc optometry, you can go for MSc optometry or fellowship in uh, various specialities like contact lens, uh, law vision, etc. And after completing the post uh, graduation, you can go for PhD. And you can apply for, uh, if you have enough experience, you can apply for recognition in the national and international universities after completion of the optometry degree course. Then these are the job profiles. You can work as a clinical optometrist or a consultant optometrist, or you can be a private practitioner. Uh, in the academic, uh, you can be a lecturer or professor or a principal after your PhD. Uh, vision consultant in companies, lens making companies, optometry researcher, and next slide, uh, what are the scope for optometry? You can work as a clinical optometrist, can seek employment in government sector, uh, in medical colleges, in primary healthcare centers and community healthcare centers. You can work or you can establish an independent practice by starting your own clinic or an optical shop or lens manufacturing unit, etc. Uh, or can work as a teaching faculty of master's in optometry. Then uh, you can work as a contact lens specialist or a vision consultant. Can seek employment with any multinational organization dealing with eye care products. Can work in optical showrooms, contact lens companies and ophthalmic lens industry, etc. And can work as an optometrist for sports vision also. So, what are the speciality of doing BSc Optometry course at AIMS? The first thing, you will get maximum exposure. Apart from the uh, theoretical knowledge, you will get maximum exposure with patients. Since 
patients are referred from other departments like uh, neurology, endocrinology, or from uh, general medicine for ophthalmic evaluation. So you will come to know what are symptoms or what are tests you need to do for each cases. So, uh, and structure, detail, uh, theory classes, then qualified and experienced qualities, uh, faculties are there. Availability of most modern technologies and equipments we have and higher percentage of placements. So, That is all about optometry. Uh, I will just try once more to share my video. Can you can it be maximized? We don't hear any sound. Now can you hear, ma'am? We can hear you, but not for does the video also have any sound? No. You can't hear? No, we can see it, but we can't hear it. So anyway, these are the procedures that we do in our OPD. This is refraction. This visual field testing. Anyway, that is all about optometry. Hope you understand something about optometry. If you have any doubts, you can ask me. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Sorry for the inconvenience caused for <laughs> <laughs> so, the technical issues uh, from the beginning. <laughs> Yeah. yeah so anyway uh, the slides were all given in detail like what you had to say everything was in detail given there uh, can you just like uh, summarize a bit like we saw so many slides can you just summarize a bit like what uh, they exactly do when they come to the internship period students the last uh, so, year yeah uh, in the three years they will in the first year they will learn the basic things and the second year a little more advanced and the final year advanced procedures they will learn and in the in internship period they will start uh, doing these procedures with our guidance okay in various clinics okay and do they have a lot of chances abroad yeah definitely Okay. Uh, lots of our students had got placement in the foreign countries and in UK also. So after completing this BSc optometry course, and if you get some experience like three years or more, you can apply for registration in the UK and all. You can directly apply from here. Oh, uh, okay. Perhaps they will ask for from for one year uh, internship period, not internship period, training period in their country under the guidance of one optometrist in their place. So after that, you will get a registration. Then you can work as an optometrist in that country. Okay. 
So uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for your uh, detailed description on what it was. Uh, so now let me hear uh, from our admission office, uh, Ms. Sruti, who will tell us about the admission procedure. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so I'll give you a brief idea on the basic admission procedures, the eligibility criteria, and what are the admission procedure for somebody who is applying to our course in the university. Bayesi Optometry, uh, as you know, it's a three-year program, a three-year program plus one-year compulsory internship. So four year in total. So the basic eligibility criteria for any student who is applying uh, for a BSc optometry in our college would be the student should have an aggregate of 60 percentage in their class 12 uh, in physics, chemistry, biology and English, PCB and English, 60 percentage aggregate in their class 12. And anybody who's applying for the program should have a minimum age of 17 years and the maximum age should be 23 as on uh, 31st of December 2023. Uh, so in our university, the admission procedure is conducted on the basis of the entrance exam conducted by the Amrita University. So students who wish to apply will have to apply for the Amrita entrance exam for life sciences, agriculture and medical sciences. That is A -E -E L in the website. Uh, the exam type will be like uh, of 80 questions comprising of physics, chemistry, uh, biology and English. There will be uh, negative marks for every wrong answer, negative one for every wrong answer and plus three for every correct answer. So it's not compulsory that you need to attend all the questions. Um, it's up to the candidate. Uh, the base, the application fee for the registration for the entrance exam is 750 rupees. We have already started the uh, application in the Amrita website. So all those who have not applied, you can just uh, apply uh, in the link which I am sharing in the chat box now. That link is the application link. So you can directly go to the link, register um, uh, yourself with the email ID and password. And there are five steps to complete the uh, admission. Uh, once you register, you have to complete your personal details, the academic details. You have to make the payment of 750 rupees and then upload whichever documents which are available right now. You might not have all the documents now, but that's okay. Once you complete the payment, the application is completed and whichever documents you have with you currently, those documents you can upload. Other documents on a later time you can upload. Okay, so uh, the question paper pattern would be MCQ, uh, multiple choice questions. Uh, the, there'll be 25 marks, uh, 25 questions each from uh, PCB, physics, chemistry, and biology, and five questions from uh, English. Okay, so total 80 questions. I'm sharing this exam paper pattern also in the chat box. Uh, we've all also updated the uh, fee structure in the university website. Uh, the total seats, uh, we have 15 this year, so out of which 50% of the seats will be for merit quota. And the other 50% is contributed to management or non-scholarship and NRI category. So this year, the fee structure for merit quota or for all those who have, all those who are looking out for a merit quota, both, both quota is based on um, entrance exam only. For merit quota, it will be 1,50,000 tuition fees alone per year. And for management or non-scholarship quota will be 2 lakhs tuition fees this year. And for all those who are applying in NRI category, it will be around $4,500. Other than this, uh, there will be something called other expenses where your miscellaneous uh, will be miscellaneous, your caution deposit, etc. will be added, which will come close to 30, 36000 And hostel and mess again will be separate close to 68,000. So these details are already updated in the uh, university website. I'm also sharing the website link um, in the chat box. You can visit this particular link. We have up, we've already updated these details in the uh, website. Um, if there is any other questions regarding the entrance exam or uh, registration uh, or basic eligibility criteria, you can, you can ask me now in the chat box or you can put a mail to our uh, mail id or ug program mail id which i'll share it in the website so any any doubts if anybody have it right now i can clear it um, maybe you can 
chat it out in the chat box or i'll put you the mail id in the web in the chat box you can put a mail the tentative dates of the exam also you could just tell them tentative dates of the exam amrita entrance 20 this 28 uh, yes 28, 29 and 30 are the tentative dates but we'll confirm it and put it in the website the website which i've shared it in the chat box in the same website all the details will be up updated yes thank you sruti for giving us that detailed expression uh, i hope uh, all the candidates and the attendees who have attended the webinar would have quite known what it is all about optometry and uh, hope it's all cleared for you now so coming to the end of the session i once again thank deepa madam for giving us your time spending this lot of time for us preparing all those slides in detail and trying to explain us the most Thank you so much for being with us and uh, I hope all those who have joined us today have also uh, got made full use of the webinar that was there for you today. So I think it's time we end the webinar. Thank you all once again.